I think we all need to strive to have a bronze medal mindset. Not a gold medal mindset, but a bronze medal mindset. So what is a bronze medal mindset? Great question. Have you ever noticed that if you look at the kind of ceremony when they give the medals, yes, the person who wins gold is ecstatic and they reach up and they bite the medal and, you know, ah, da, 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 da. But number two always has kind of this forced smile. Yeah, they, they look happy, but do they really look happy? But have you ever noticed the person who wins the bronze, they are flipping ecstatic. I mean, they're literally up there like, look at me, I've been in the bra, oh my God, holy cow, what the, what just happened? Oh my God. They're thinking about all their homies back home, like cheering in the local tavern for you. Like it, it's, it's noticeable. In fact, it's so noticeable that there have been studies done about the fact that people that win the bronze are happier than people who win silver. I mean, I think we all know, yeah, gold, you're going to be ecstatic. I mean, a little footnote on the gold medal is that they also show that when you win a medal, you're really ecstatic in the moment if you won gold, bronze, whatever. But after the Olympics are over, it's really common for people to hit a really low period. Why? Well, because you're not really pursuing something important. We've talked about this so much on the Mel Robbins podcast, that having something that's important and meaningful to you to pursue, and it could be something small could be just creating a cutting garden. It could be going back to school. It could be just working on being a nicer person. Having something to pursue creates meaning in your life. It is the source of happiness personally in terms of the kind of happiness you can create for yourself. But let's get back to why are bronze medalists, based on just watching television and also based on research, happier than silver medalists? Well, there's a very specific reason why. And the reason is because silver medalists stand on the podium. And you know what they think about? They think about the fact that they could have been first. And, you know, I guess there's that saying that uh, coming in second is the first place for the loser. I don't like that. But a lot of people, when you come in second, you don't think, oh, I, I won second place or I won the silver. You think I lost gold. I didn't make number one. They did this huge research study that was published in the American Psychological Association. I'm having trouble speaking today. American Psychological Association. Thank God I'm only talking and I'm not on a pommel horse right now. That the reason why silver medalists are not as happy as people who win bronze is because they are comparing up. They're looking at the gold medalist and they're thinking to themselves, maybe if I had just done this, if only I'd been a second faster, if I'd only tried this, if I had trained a little harder, if I would have... So they're no longer happy with where they are. And it's this thing that you and I can do too, where you compare up. Maybe you're starting your singing career and you're you're comparing yourself to Taylor Swift. That's going to make you miserable. What you want to do is you want to have a bronze medal mindset. Why? Because a bronze medalist is so damn happy that they're on the podium at all, that they're even in the game, that they're in the arena, and they're doing what psychologists call comparing down. They're like, oh my God, at least I'm up here. You know, at least I'm up here. I'm doing a lot better than a lot of people right now. And I'm very happy. I'm doing a lot better than my old self because I am actually standing up. This is pretty amazing. So their ability to put where they are in perspective not compared to people who are better than, not compared to people who are more than, not compared to people that are ranked higher than, but their ability to compare themselves downward creates this level of gratitude and humility for what you just accomplished. And this has now been shown in research. And the truth is, how does this work for you and me? Because this is a phenomenon in life. We are all struggling with comparison. You got to be careful what you're looking for. Because if you're looking for evidence that other people are better than you, you're going to find it. And this is why I want you to have a bronze medal mindset. We're not going to be looking up and looking around and looking for people who have more or better. And I'll tell you why. Because on a planet with 8 billion people, there will always be someone who is smarter, richer, taller, shorter, skinnier, fatter. Like you name it, 
There is somebody who has done it. And if you allow yourself to get a silver medal mindset where you're constantly scanning the world, looking for people that, oh, I could have been that, I could have been this, if only I had done that. And, and, you, and you start to then just glaze your whole life with this sort of silvery gray, ugh, where you are constantly seeing what you're not, which means you don't appreciate what you have. Like you can't be grateful and beat yourself up at the same time. You can't appreciate what you have and at the same time be just pounding yourself with all the things you wish you would have done. And that's why silver medalists based on research and based on experience are not as happy as bronze medalists. And it kind of shows you that life is really about your perspective. You got to be very careful in life because whatever it is that you're looking for, you're going to find it. If you're going to spend your time searching for all the things you should have done or for people that have done a better job than you, you will find them. This I, I experienced this when I published my uh, book, The High Five Habit. One of my goals had always been to be a New York Times bestselling author. And of course, I dreamt in my wildest dreams that I would be number one New York Times bestselling author. But for years and years and years, I was just dying to get that recognition. And one of the reasons why is when I published the five second rule, it was a self-published book and I didn't know they don't recognize those on the New York Times list. So I never made the New York Times list. So the high five habit comes out and I debut as number two. Do you want to know what my reaction was? I'm sort of embarrassed to tell you this. <laughs> I was pissed. I wasn't happy at all. I actually burst into tears. That was partially because I was so exhausted, but I was not happy. And I was not happy precisely because of this research that I was comparing myself to the person that got number one. And I immediately went from this moment that should have been like, I just achieved something I've been dreaming about for five years. Well done, Mel. Congratulations, Mel. Like, let's go have a beer. That's fantastic. Let's go to Disney World. Let's celebrate. You did it, girl. Go. No, I was like, damn it. And that's exactly what people do and feel when they compare up. You renovate your kitchen. Then you go to a friend's house. Oh, there's this nicer. I don't like mine anymore. Yeah, you know, I was reading this article in Inc. Magazine by one of their editors, Jeff Hayden, and he tells this incredible story that you may be able to relate to that is an example of the silver medalist comparing up versus the bronze medal mindset, which is being where you are and comparing down. And that makes you grateful. He said that he had started this entry-level shop floor position and he worked his tail off and climbed the ladder and became a supervisor who's super happy with the increase in pay. And that only made him want to work harder, right? Get in early, stay late, volunteer for projects, like be more collaborative, take on more responsibilities. He was so happy, happy to work hard. And then he found out that another supervisor was a little lazy, a little difficult, you know, kind of uncooperative, made half again the salary that he made, meaning made more money. And nothing had changed in his life except for the upward comparison that he applied. And he said he could not get past it, that he still worked hard, but it didn't work that hard, right? And that's what can happen when you fall prey to this upward comparison. Like he was perfectly happy with what he earned until he learned what someone else made. And then he became profoundly unhappy, even though his pay hadn't changed, his duties hadn't changed, his future opportunities hadn't changed. The only thing that had changed in that situation was his perspective. Now, what's interesting is that, of course, there's things he can do. Is it fair? I don't think it's fair, but you know, he can go do something about it while still maintaining a different attitude. Because if you get yourself all worked up and pissed off like I did when I was number two and silver medalists do or you've done in your life, it's not going to help you walk into your supervisor's office and actually advocate for what you want. It's not going to help you stay in a place where you are grateful for what you have. And it's also not going to help you feel motivated to continue to do the work that will help you 
earn that raise that you deserve. I love the Olympics. I love seeing the athletes come together from around the world. I love performance, competition. Of course, I love to win. And that's why I'm so excited to share five things that I've noticed and learned from the Olympics this year. These are habits, habits of Olympians and Paralympians. 